I've spoken about my trip down to uh, Cuba uh, many times on this program, I think. I mean, one of the things that really struck me, and we should say that I don't know that the president has the ability to lift the sanctions um, unilaterally. No, the embargo is, uh, is, is, is going to need to be lifted by Congress. But he does have the ability to sort of like begin the road to normalizing relations. Right. Like I think the embassy, I think they can do. I think he can do the embassy on his own. I think a lot of the specifics of like how you apply things, like he's already talked about relaxing, like some of the travel and the financial. The OFAC uh, regulations. All of right. that stuff is in his hands. And then obviously having diplomatic relations. I mean, that's, that's basically the, the major announcement. Right. And uh, one of the things, I mean, I mentioned this many times, but the U.S. interest section or whatever they call it, the building that will be the embassy in Havana is on, and I cannot remember the road, but it is uh, one of the roads that, uh, maybe it's on the Malacon, I think it is, that um, runs along, uh, well, it's an island, uh, but the, the ocean. And just as you get into sort of like head into sort of, I guess, central Havana, from the Malacone, there is a statue. And it's, you know, it's green from being weathered. And it's, it's got a cement base that you can see is significantly weathered. Uh, it's chipped away. You can see the rocks sort of sticking out from underneath the cement. Now, this was 15 years ago, 14 years ago, or whatever it was. Um, so it could even be more weathered now. And it's a statue of Jose Marti, who is sort of the, uh, the father of uh, independent Cuba, with his hand up, basically giving the stop signal to the U.S. Embassy, which is in the distance. Wow. And in his, hand, his arm, he's holding a child. Now, here's the interesting part. That child is Elian Gonzalez. And the statue is obviously not that old, even though it was built to look like it had always been there, that it was weathered. And it's a fascinating piece of propaganda where you have sort of, Jose Marti has traveled through time and space to tell the U.S., keep your hands off Elian Gonzalez from the 1990s. And uh, it was an ama it's an amazing piece of propaganda. Uh, and I remember, you know, these type of stuff resonated with me because this was following 9-11. It was the summer following 9-11. And the U.S. had already started to uh, float the idea of TIPS. You can look it up, T-I-P-S. It basically would have empowered postmen, cable installers, newspaper delivery guys to report on what they see in your house. <laughs> Spies. This guy had a, you know, uh, you know, uh, this guy had a revolutionary poster in his uh, house. And I was freaking out about this at that time when we went down to Cuba and at one point, I was staying with the van, and the crew was out shooting, and Nikki was out shooting, and my Spanish is not good. I can understand a little bit. I can't really speak. And a guy wearing flip-flops and cut-off jeans and tank top comes up, and he starts talking to me in Spanish. And I'm having to say, like, you know, I try to first understand what he's saying, but ultimately, in Cuba, too, they speak so fast. I ultimately had to say, yeah, you, you know, hablo espanol. Uh, um, yo soy americano. <laughs> and, and he's like, ah. Oh. Well, within two or three hours, someone we knew at the culture of the minister of uh, art or culture, who we had applied to go and shoot there, came to us and said, look, Cuban counterintelligence is now following you because of that exchange you had. And because they have these sort of like neighborhood 
spy guys. And uh, that's what the tips program was like. And then it, it led to like, I was incredibly paranoid that we would not be able to leave with all the footage. I mean, we had interviewed um, uh, Corrales, who took some of the most sort of iconic photographs of the Cuban Revolution. Uh, gosh, I can't remember now. The other guy who was the assistant at the time to the guy who took the famous Che Guevara photo. Um, we traveled to the Bay of Pigs, but I was afraid that we were not going to get our footage out of the country. So I made a whole set of dummy tapes and hid the real tapes in like my underwear and stuff like that. Not my own personal wearing underwear, but we ended up getting out of the country because La Bamba, that movie, apparently they shot the whole thing, showed up at the airport. Customs just said, oh, we'll be taking this. And <laughs> they had nothing. They had to reshoot the whole movie. The, wait, the movie about Patrice Lumumba? That's what, which one movie are you talking about? The, I, the guys who did some music. It was a music one. Oh, the music. Oh, it's a totally different movie. They just, wait, they just I didn't know that story. Oh, yeah. They shot like That's a bunch of stuff. Movie. And I can't remember what the movie is. It's about, uh, they shot like huge three quarters of the movie. They get to the airport, they got all their film, and the guys at the customs was like, you know what? We'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Adios.